Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the game stage and today it is finally time after a year of 2018 which was a fucking phenomenal year for video games. It is time for my personal top 10 video games of 2018. Once again, taking a bit of the unedited approach, we're just gonna go 10 to 1. I'm gonna give you my 5 honorable mentions and my 5 dishonorable mentions. So let's start with those quickly. So, my 5 dishonorable mentions. Far Cry 5, very disappointing. Follows the Ubisoft formula, first person shooting, you go around. Stories convoluted, did not like it. Dragon Quest XI, I tried to get into it. I got about 15 hours in, the combat just was bland. The music made me want to kill myself. And I just didn't have a great time. Another one, Soul Calibur 6. Great fucking game. I just feel like it was one of those I played for a weekend and stopped. So that was kind of disappointing. Then we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Another Ubisoft game. Which reminded me that I fucking hate this goddamn Ubisoft formula. It's exhausted my soul and I can't do it anymore. Then Guacamelee 2. I love Guacamelee 1. Guacamelee 2 just felt like more Guacamelee. My five honorable mentions. Octopath Traveler. Fantastic JRPG. Love the art style of the world. I think some parts of it drag too much because you have to go through eight characters, different chapter, chapters one through four. You can't like, you can't use a party member that's stronger. Like you can't use four party members that you really just want to train. You have to train all of them. So there's a lot of force grindiness. I didn't like that. Super Mario Party. I love this game. Fun with friends. It's been a blast. It's just Mario Party. Just Shapes and Beats is a fantastic indie game it's like a rhythm hell beat em, uh, not beat up rhythm hell shooter where you're like this little arrow guy and you're going through these music tracks and the levels are trying to kill you at the same time fantastic sushi striker amazing puzzle game exclusive on the switch uh it's like a weird sushi puzzle game with a weird story over the top stuff i love it and pokemon let's go pikachu barely edged off fuck i hate gen 1 so much but i had a fucking great time with this game i have a review on it so go check that out without further ado let us get into the top 10 games of the year. Number 10, we have Celeste. Now, Celeste, you guys have heard about this game. And obviously, I don't have to, like, talk about it that much. But Celeste was a game that was amazing. The platforming's fantastic. The story is very deep. It doesn't feel forced. It's. I think what I adore about it the most is, is that the level design ties into the story, right? Like, you have Madeline, the girl, climbing this mountain. It's not just for the sake of the platforming. It's because she has a reason for it and the discoveries you have throughout it, the characters you meet, the interactions, the moments. It's a very narratively powerful game while also being a fantastic platformer with some truly difficult challenge and a lot of settings to make it easier if you want to check it out. Number 9 is Mario Tennis Aces. Mario Tennis Aces surprised the shit out of me because I obviously love the Mario sports games, but this one was so amazing because it kind of had a unique fighting game-like style where you have meter management and you can either choose to fill up that meter to do a super shot or you can use a bit of the meter to slow down a ball coming at you so you can hit it faster and if you hit the ball perfectly, you gain meter and the wacky characters, the super fun gameplay, the idea of Making a complex, fun tennis game without making it too complicated to be annoying is all I wanted. I played a ton of the online. I actually really like the single-player campaign. Not many people do, but here we are. Number 8, Dead Cells. Dead Cells is a fucking phenomenal roguelike metroidvania platform right so every time you die you come back to life like any roguelike but you get more rewards every time you're inching slowly and slowly to the top by getting more upgrades and it's just i think what i adored about it was just there was a sense of accomplishment you had from beating a boss or getting through an area that was just unrivaled in many games and beating it was one of my favorite moments in a game the art style the pixel art is fucking beautiful the gameplay is so fun check this out if you have it Number 7 is Mega Man 11. I am a huge Mega Man fan. Mega Man is one of my favorite franchises of all time. Mega Man 11, a little worried, was a little worried about it going into it, but they fucking delivered, man. I think what I love is it keeps the heart and soul of Mega Man while also moving the franchise forward a little bit. It's got a new art style. I really love the cell shading look. You can finally see the Robot Masters, what they really look like, and they're much more charming and creative. The Robot Master abilities you get are fantastic, like Block Man's where you drop a bunch of blocks on enemies, or um, what's it called? Or Tundra Man, where you get these like ice block spins. It's just there's a lot of cool powers you get. The level design's awesome. The double gear system where you can choose to either slow down time or or power up your your mega buster but you have it on like a, a specific meter i love that mechanic because it changes things up so 
That's what I fucking love so much about this game. And the music, obviously, on point. A ton of challenges for you to do for extra content. So check this game out. Number six is a lot of people's big game of the year, God of War. I fucking love this game. This game, I fucking hated God of War. I hated 1, 2, 3. I hate that franchise. I hate Kratos. But this game was phenomenal. It, The way I describe this game is it does everything a video game should do right. It nails gameplay. It nails narrative. It nails environmental exploration. It nails graphics. It just does everything so wonderfully well. Like, I genuinely don't really have a problem with this game. I love the over-the-top boss battles, the moments between Kratos and Atreus. It's just, this game had so many beautiful moments and incredible crazy action moments. The combat was so satisfying. I fucking love this game. Number five, one that came out right at the end of the year randomly, Tetris Effect. Tetris is one of my favorite games of all time, and they somehow managed to make it better. They somehow took a masterpiece and added a layer to it. Going through these crazy, beautifully visual, beautifully visually crafted levels where it's a different song and the blocks look different every level and every time you spin the block it makes a little sound and the more lines you complete the more the music swells and swells and it gives you a sense of accomplishment like none other. It really is just a fucking, it's a special game man for like I think it's about 20-ish levels but going through that journey from start to finish is just incredible. Trying to get higher scores is something I obviously love. So you take the arcadiness of Tetris, you add visual flares to it, you add an incredible soundtrack to it that's so, so good, and you have yourself a fucking damn good game. Number four is Marvel Spider-Man. Spider-Man, one of my favorite characters of all time, one of my favorite just media entertainment characters of all time. I love the movies, and I even like some of the previous games, but this one blows them out of the water. I think what I love is it nails everything Spider-Man should. It nails the comedic vibe. It nails the really fun gameplay. I love it more than the Arkham one because it's a little more fast-paced because it is Spider-Man. He's more loose. The swinging across the city, you've obviously heard about how phenomenal it is. The story is so touching and I love that it does the very Spider-Man thing where it makes you relate to him. And you also feel bad for him because he's just trying to be a normal dude who has spider powers but is also going through a lot of shit. So fucking love the game and so, so good. Number three, Red Dead Redemption 2. One of the best stories I've ever experienced in a video game. I know this game is very controversial, weirdly enough, because it has a fucking like 97 on Metacritic, but I adored this game. There's nothing like that story that's told from Arthur Morgan's perspective and seeing Dutch and seeing the gang all together and how it slowly collapses through the journey. I loved how authentic the open world felt where you would just drop like so roll a roam around and you just find things happening. You go to a city, people are having conversations, people are living their lives. It just felt like a living, breathing world. It had fun gameplay, again, not the best, but just fun enough. And that narrative and that world and everything about that game is fucking phenomenal. Number two is Dragon Ball Fighters. Man, Dragon Ball is such a special series to me. It really is like my second or first favorite just thing in this world. And we've had a ton of Dragon Ball games in the past, but Dragon Ball Fighters is just the fucking cream of the crop, the king of kings. It takes the fucking incredible developer arc systems, gives them one of the fucking most over-the-top fun properties of all time, and mixes it in a 2D fucking fighting game that's nothing like anything else. It's a 3v3 fighter. It nails the art style of Dragon Ball, the music, the dialogue. Every character has custom dialogues with each other. The dramatic finish moves you do when you're at certain matchups. I still have to play the narrative. I got the Switch version of it, which looks phenomenal. The game just... Everything about this game I love so goddamn much. I sunk over 600 hours into this game in fucking 2018. That's insane. And I just love it so much. It nails everything. The DLC was fantastic. I just kept coming back to it because I fucking love Dragon Ball and Arc Systems fucking nailed it. Number one, no surprise if you guys know me, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I don't even have to harp on this game. You guys know how I feel about this. It's the ultimate Smash game. It's everything I could have wanted from Super Smash Bros. and more. Incredible single player content, incredible local multiplayer, fun online, thank god I haven't experienced lag. An insane roster of characters, the new spirit stuff that's I, I think I like it better than trophies. Everything about that game is just fucking phenomenal. The new characters, everyone being here, the music selection, the hype, everything about Smash Bros. is what I look for in a video game. And I just, 
I can't state just enough how much I fucking adore this game. Like, there's no way I can really word it. Like, there's two... This is a game I could spend genuinely five hours talking about every single little aspect. Sakurai and the team nailed it, and this is my game of the year. Maybe my favorite game of all time. I just, I can't with this game. It's so, so fucking perfect. There you have it. These are my top ten games of the year. Let me know yours, and let me know if you like my list, if you hate it. That's all I got for you. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe for more videos. 2019 is going to be fun. We've gonna, we're have going to have a lot of new games, reviews, all this shit coming in hot. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.